There. That's just what I was looking for. So ever since I posted a video about panel lights for your Eurorack, I've been getting asked about making a version with RGB lights and CV controls. Well that prototype is complete, and this video is about how I made it. As an aside, I think the original light module is better for illumination to, you know, get things done with. Link in the description below. This RGB module is more about looking cool first and being functional second. That said, let's make it. For simplicity, I knew I wanted to use addressable RGB LEDs. Generally, these come in two flavors, NeoPixel and DotStar. NeoPixels are a little cheaper and only need one wire for communication. However, the communication protocol is very computationally expensive. DotStar, on the other hand, costs a little more, need two wires for communication, but you can use the SPI port, available on almost any microcontroller, to make communication simple and easy. While I have used NeoPixels in the past, for this project, I chose DotStar. Now let's look at how it works starting with the light modules. Data and clock come in here, chain through the dot stars and exit here. This setup allows modules to be cascaded together in series for lighting effects that propagate through several modules. Modules are powered by 5 volts, which will be supplied through a 16-pin Eurorack power connector. The layout for etching looks like this, the power connector being of surface mount type and hot glued to the back of the module. Next let's look at the control module. Dot stars don't do anything by themselves, so you're always going to need some kind of a microcontroller to run the show. For those of you playing at home, I use a PIC 18F13K22, but any Arduino or Atmel microcontroller could pretty much do the same thing. These switches here control the mode of operation, from a simple all LEDs the same for illumination to moving patterns that are more for entertainment. Brightness of the LEDs are controlled by these potentiometers here, one for each of the R, G, and B channels. The three jacks here are used to connect analog signals to the module and override the potentiometers for light brightness. I use stereo jacks here so that I can use the ring on the jack to detect when a patch cable is inserted. Patch cables only have a signal at the tip and ground out the ring on a stereo jack connection. This can be detected by the microcontroller. The analog signals then pass through an op amp and through this crude rectifier before being bred by the microcontroller. This allows for both an AC or positive DC signal to be used as an input. The microcontroller then does its analog to digital magic and send out the appropriate commands to the dot stars through its SPI port, which is wired to a jack here. This way, a standard patch cable can be used to connect this module to the light modules, and the light modules can be connected together with additional patch cables. Now let's build it. I start with laser etching the light modules and the faceplate for the control module. And then the PCB for the control module. Then the engraving and cutout for the light blockers that go on top of the light modules. To cut out the PCBs, I upgraded to a diamond blade for my micro table saw. They should really just charge $40 more for the saw and include this blade because it actually works. I was originally going to have the control module be part of a light module. Then I came to my senses. Now for a quick dip in the ferric chloride. And with the etch resist removed. Now to assemble everything.
And here we have the finished modules. Time to add software to the control module. And after a quick test, mount everything in the rack and wait until it gets dark. And let's see what this creation can do. In illumination mode, all the lights are the same brightness controlled by the potentiometers. If we go to pattern mode, first pattern of a simple UV meter, where the bottom LEDs light up first, and the stronger the signal gets, the higher the lights go up on the modules. The second pattern is chase mode, where the intensity of the input signal propagates down the modules over time. Well that just about does it for this video. Now this prototype's a little rough. If you want me to make it a real product, let me know in the comments. If I get enough interest, I may go into production. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.